Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 258, featuring a review of a 2012 game called Endless Space. It's a really fun 4X turn-based strategy game. I think you guys are really get a kick out of it. Anyway, there's a lot to cover, so without further ado, here is Endless Space. And here we go with a little game called Endless Space. Basically, civilization in space. Lots of fun. I've been had my eye on, eye on it forever, but it's been quite expensive on Steam. Just the other day they had a sale and I picked it up. And I actually uh, liked this enough I thought it would make a good video. So I think a lot of you guys probably probably like this game. It does have a bit of a learning curve to it. You know, just like Civilization does. It's probably not as easy to get into as a uh, Civ. You know, this is... You're going to have to do a little research. Maybe after you see this video you'll have a better idea. But anyway, this, this came out back in July of 2012. A company named Amplitude. Which is uh, based out of Paris, France. Pretty cool. Uh, the the people from the company have worked on different games, of course. They did Ruse, The Art of Deception, Call of Juarez, uh, Might and Magic Clash of Heroes. Uh, that's uh, Matthew Gerard who uh, produced this game. There's choices, choices, choices. It'll take you a while to really get into this and figure out uh, what kind of character you want to play. Some of the different factions not sure if they all have their own ships, but they definitely there's different kinds of ships, different kinds of uh, technologies. I've only played as the United Empire, so I have no idea what what else is, uh, is available here. There's plenty enough stuff with just this one faction to keep you busy for quite a while. All right, let's watch a little intro movie here and then get into it. They're not so united, the planets of this United Empire. It's more a gaggle of unruly imperial corporations run by insolent dukes. But their armies are strong, their economy is efficient, and their ships are powerful. I fear that they may be the ones who will finally unite or dominate the galaxy. They'll turn it into a shrine to the gods of commerce. A profane church with Emperor Maximilian Zelevas as its high priest. You know, there's something about all this that reminds me of Dune. The old Frank Herbert series. If you haven't read the original Dune, by the way, I highly recommend that. Just <laughs> stop this video and go, and go uh, read the novel. Okay, so here we are. The, I guess it always starts the same. We have a colony ship and a scout ship. And the colony ships work like the settlers do in Civ. They're, they're the, the guys that can go settle another system. See, these are systems here. Uh, as you can see, some of the systems, uh, they all say cannot colonize. Later on, you'll be able to colonize those when you do your scientific research. But at the very start of the game, you're just going to have to look around and see if you can find a... You know, class M planet, <laughs> as it were. You can also explore a little bit with a colony ship, but every now and then, uh, not all the time, it doesn't happen as much as in Civ, but there are pirates around, and they will gobble up your colony ships. Also, if you run into any of the other factions, they can attack you as well. Now, looking at these planets, you can try to decide which one you want to colonize. It's really important to try to get uh, the population up as soon as possible. So you can do that with uh, these exploitations. Oh, there's so much to explain. <laughs> All right, so when you uh, when you colonize a planet, the first thing you want to do is uh, exploit it. So each planet can have one exploitation option. And so I'm going for these uh, soils. Uh, the Terran planets are best for the farming, uh, the food production. Other types of planets like that Arctic there is good for science. Uh, the, there's desert ones that are good for uh, dust, which is basically the currency in this game. See, I told you it was like a uh, dude. Uh, so that's a good way to start, start uh, get some exploitation going. Now here's the skills tree, or the learning tree, uh, the tech tree, whatever you want to call it. And man, this thing is massive. <laughs> I have played this game for days and got nowhere near the, uh, you know, with one game for days and gotten nowhere near the, the, the limits of this thing. Uh, just like in Civ, some of these will take more turns than others. You can only research one at a time, but you really have to put some thought into what you want to do first. Uh, there's disadvantages and advantages to all these. 
some some of the strategy guides I looked at suggested just food, food, food. You know, whatever you can do to get more food going. Uh, I don't know, maybe. I could see some uh, other, these other strategies working too. For example, that xenology there will get me some resources. I, can't, I won't be able to harvest any of those resources until I get that tech. And then uh, once I get it though, you know, I can take advantage of it. This work kind of like the luxury resources. Incive, so well worth picking them up. You can trade them. A little bit of story here. Every now and then there'll be these story events, galactic events, and random events. It's all sorts of uh, fun science fiction worked into this. But overall, though, it's not a story game. <laughs> it's definitely a straight up strategy. You notice some of those planets have little banners on them with a star. So those are the random events, kind of like the Civ when you find the ruins, or the, what is this new? Oh, cool, got a new scout ship. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. So one strategy would be just to try to send your scout ship off and collect all these, because uh, it's a one-shot deal. Now this is the first time I've played on the spiral map, so a little bit new with this. I've played on the discs one, disc ones before, I'm thinking this one might actually be more fun because it looks like I've got a convenient choke point there. Okay, so i got a choice here between two different ones. You can see that the planets will have positive things on them and sometimes negative things. Like that one, one planet there is toxic. Eventually, you know, just as the other parts of the game, you'll be able to do some research and learn how to deal with that negative effect, get rid of it. It's usually well worth it. The more population you have, the better off you are, basically. Of course, it's just like Civ, you'll have to deal with happiness. See some of these uh, abilities I'm collecting here have to do with happiness. You know, just like any of these 4X games, there's expl exploration, expansion, exploitation, and exterminate! I am a big fan of the exterminate <laughs> option. Good to be here. Play the inner dialect here. Then you have four resources, dust, basically the gold you can purchase things with. Uh, the science, the more science you have, the faster you learn technology, of course. Uh, then you have uh, labor, this looks like a little gear wheel. Uh, that affects pretty much everything because later on you'll be able to convert that into, the, into money or science. And then lastly is food. Now, one thing is pretty cool about this game is once you get uh, the solar system or the system completely full of people uh, you can still make colony ships and every time you make a colony ship it'll deplete some of the population and then you can send those uh, those guys off. It doesn't have to be an unexplored system it could be a system that just needs more people on it so you can use that as a way to uh, keep funneling population away from the crowded areas into the lesser crowded planets, the ones you just conquered or, or settled on. So It's all pretty cool. Like here's a star system improvement uh, these will affect the entire system. Uh, you also have those exploitations for the individual planets. And then some of the uh, improvements will only pertain to certain kinds of planets, but they'll have different effects, Let's say an arid planet, or planets with a moon. You know, just so much, so much to uh, to this game. So I'm just sending the scout out. I'm start, starting to get a feel for how the spiral map is going to look. It's actually pretty cool. Another cool innovation is when you settle a system, if there's multiple planets in that system uh, that you can colonize, you don't have to use the colony ships to do that. Once you get it, uh, once you get at least one colony ship going, or one colony established, then you can just send people from that planet to the next planet over. So it works out pretty neat. Alright, so here's the research options I need to start colonizing on these other types of planets. I always like to get those done first. I seem to be alone. The uh, last few times I've played, I've gotten my butt spanked <laughs> right at the beginning because I was just right up next to some some enemies. And that wasn't cool. Looks like I have a little time to prepare myself here, so I'm going to indulge a little bit in some infrastructure building. Other games, though, I pretty much had to just start building uh, warships right away. I'm going to colonize that planet. You also have an AI you can turn on and handle your planet constructions for you, but yeah, what's the fun in that? Alright, here's the hero's screen. 
So as if there's not enough complexity to, <laughs> to this, you also can hire these heroes. You're limited to three at the beginning, but later on you can have, uh, I don't know what the, the top is, but I've had, I think, up to five. You, uh, you have to buy them, and they get exponentially more expensive, so really it's going to be a while before you can get all three. And you have different types of heroes, and they have different trees they go with, and you can assign them a planet or a system, and then they'll have different kinds of effects you can you can upgrade to uh, help manage the system. Oh, I forgot there's also that tax rate thing. <laughs> yeah, if your people uh, start to get too pissed off at you, you can try to cut taxes. Uh, the only problem there is you'll start to run out of money, and that's not good either. So here's all the different kinds of effects this guy's going to have on the system. And they're not stuck in one place, but it, once you put them on somewhere, you have to wait a while before you can move them. So I got myself into trouble that way. Stick them on a planet that's, uh, that's about to be attacked, and you can lose them. They don't die, but they just get wounded. It takes a while. To, you either have to pay a lot of money or wait a while for them to heal back up. You're still going to have to pay. <laughs> so you're really better off if you can keep those uh, heroes from dying. All right, just... Uh, Continuing on here, see all those red, those red circles on the systems means that I don't yet have the technology I need to settle to settle there. I just noticed this game is thirty dollars on Steam. Uh, somehow or another, I ended up with a coupon for it in my uh, Steam inventory, which knocked it down to fifteen. I'm pretty sure they did that. <laughs> you know, once a uh, Civilization Beyond Earth hits. It's supposed to hit in uh, October 24th. Uh, games like this, probably nobody's going to be playing these or talking about them, so... Kind of sad, really. Alright, got my Xenobiology. I like the way you can queue up a whole bunch of different research. I'm always wondering, you know, the same thing with Civ sometimes. You, you have to make that trade-off between something that you can learn quickly and put to use right away. Or are you better off just making that long haul to get the really awesome technology? You can also trade technologies with other races and so on. So nothing uh, surprising there. Yeah, see, even these heroes have their own trees. So you can get a look and see what's possible for your heroes. This guy's got some kind of science leech. That sounds pretty cool. But you definitely want to have... Uh, these uh, heroes, as soon as possible, start getting them leveled up. So it can make a huge difference, especially when you put them on the fleets. Right now I don't really have any warships, so I'll just stick them on a planet for a while. Hopefully by the time I get some uh, warships going, their little cool-down cool timers will be up. I can stick them on the fleet. So I guess eventually you need to settle all this. You need to explore it all. If you notice there at the these uh, top two planets, there's a kind of a wispy, shady, shady smoky-looking trail. Now, those are the wormholes, and you have to learn a, a tech before you can go across them. But as I was uh, saying earlier, that's going to make for a nice choke point there. So you can bombard or set up a, uh, uh, what you call it, a barricade to keep enemies from coming over. One thing I think this game does really well and you kind of have to admire, I don't know how long it takes to do all the balancing on something like this, but it's, it seems to be just a, right at the time you're about to get bored, boom, you got the new tech, <laughs> you got, you know, some, some, some new thing has opened up and suddenly it's all fresh again. You know, like when you get those uh, new planets you can settle, a lot of these older systems will open back up again, you can go back in and put down some more colonies. There are some parts of it that aren't the best. I think it's a little bit lame that you just have this identical red ship icon on this uh, solar system view. You know, I've played other games like this and they'll have little bitty ships. Yeah, I guess they did it this way just to make it easier to see. But you can't complain about the, the music in the game. It's really, really nice. Never got old, but it's not just bland either. go some food so you can see all the stuff you can queue up here. Now the bad part about the colony ships are, you know, as I said, that'll actually take some of your population away when you make those. So it's kind of a balancing act. The thing is, if you take too long to get all these colonies down, uh, the computer will come over and <laughs> take it from you. 
Also, you notice how there's Hika there has that red circle around it? Uh, that's the sphere of influence. That's actually going to be critical uh, pretty soon because if you have colonized a planet and it's not in that red circle, then any the computer can come over there and start invading it. It doesn't have to declare war on you. It's sort of considered a cold war or no man's land or whatever you want to call it. So you really have to worry about getting that influence up as well as uh, your colonies. You can try to take the brute force approach and just make a whole bunch of uh, ships, or you can think about the planets that are most likely to be invaded and you have different kinds of structures you can build to make them uh, tougher to conquer. You can also station some ships in the hangar that'll also make them take longer to break through and take your base. Look at all these options. So as we'll see in a minute, the combat in this game is kind of a rock, paper, scissors sort of deal. Uh, you've got three different kinds of def defenses and three different kinds of offensive weapons. You've got lasers, missiles, and uh, what they call kinetic, which I guess are bullets. And then you have uh, three different kinds of shields that match up with that. So one way to play the game is kind of do the jack-of-all-trades ships and have a little bit of protection against everything and a, a little bit of offensive weapons to hopefully get through anything the computer has. The only problem with that is it doesn't always work out too well. Uh, you can butt up against enemies that are maybe they have focused on lasers and they can pretty much annihilate you if they just get a little bit ahead of you in the tech tree. So it is uh, always a race to try to get that, try to be at least on par if not one step ahead. It really gets bad. You know, if you get a far surpassed in technology, you might as well just quit because, uh, you know, you could have 500 ships. And if they're the, the, you know, the old wooden ships, you know, by way of analogy, and he's got the modern <laughs> battleships, he's going to annihilate you. You won't even touch him. So it's not like in Civ where you can keep sending uh, the inferior units and kind of weaken him a little bit. You know, if he gets enough... He gets far enough ahead of you, he'll basically be invincible. So something else to think about. You always want to be, <laughs> you know, keeping an eye on those on those weapon branches. Just looking at here some of the different options. Uh, this is the those satellites are what help you to spread your sphere of influence. So that's pretty critical. Uh, also has some technologies related to trading. Now trading is kind of interesting in this game. So you don't uh, directly negotiate the trade options, you know, what planets trade with, with whom, and all the trading is done amongst the computer players. So you can't be traded, you're not trading with your own systems. So it's kind of a pain if you're like me and you like to be the, you not have any friends in these games and just be a butthole to everybody. So it really behooves you to try to make peace with at least a couple of the computer players, and then the trade will be automatic once you get the peace going. You do have to have a building for them to trade in, called the Extreme Options Trade. And then uh, also, you have to have explored their system. If you haven't ever, if their planet is not on your, your map, then you can't trade with them. So that gets a little tricky. You have to send scouts and try to keep them from getting killed by <laughs> their guys. <laughs> and just because you're at peace, that doesn't mean you can just go wherever you want, unless you have the Open Borders option. And you probably won't get that for a while, but you know, it is doable. And the trading is really lucrative, so it's worth looking into. Just looking at the different ways you can upgrade the ships. You notice you've got armor, different weapons, some really interesting uh, support modules too, like extra battery power. Uh, you've got one that will let you carry more tonnage. That one's really useful. So, you know, I'm not sure what exactly is the best strategy to go with here. But it's definitely fun to experiment and try different things. Of course, uh, it's a little hard to, to tell what's going to happen because I haven't even seen the computer players yet. Once you start fighting them, you'll get a feel for what kind of techs they're going for. Some of them will use the beam weapons, and you can uh, put the right kind of shields on. But anyway, it's pretty cool. And you can also create as many of these different templates as you want. So if you wanted to have a laser ship and a kinetic ship, you know, that's, that's all well and good. Now, once you upgrade the designs, uh, then you have to go in and yeah, let's hire this additional hero. Uh, you can upgrade the ships that e your existing ships, but they have to be on friendly territory. 
And of course it takes a lot of cash to do that. So again, you need everything. A lot of times uh, it's almost as important to upgrade the stuff as it is to make new ships. So you might want to put a couple things on just making gold for a while until you can upgrade your old fleet. Looking up my hero options. That one's uh, good for additional labor, so I think I'll go for that. All right, so hopefully you're starting to get a feel for this. I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you a little bit later in the game so you can see what the combat's like. All right, so I finally got my wormhole technology, so I was able to go across the wormhole. There we go. And you know, there's some pretty cool planets over there. I really like these systems that have the big populations on them. Those are always nice. Also, the ones that have world wonders or galactic wonders are really cool. They're the ones that have a little orange circle around them. So it's always good to find the planets with lots of resources. By the way, the purple resources are the strategic ones. You actually have to have those to make certain kinds of modules for your ships. And then the white ones are the luxury, luxury resources. And if you can get four of those, then you get the a monopoly on it. You get certain benefits from that. And the strategic resources, if you get enough of those, then you'll have them in abundance. Uh, which also has benefits on it. So there's another trade-off between, you know, should you trade and just get the money, and try to get technologies or whatever from the computer players, or would you rather just hold on to those and get those additional perks? Choices, choices, choices. <laughs> That's the fun of these games, though, right? It's like these big systems with all these knobs and buttons and levers, and it's fun to get in there and start twisting and turning things, and hope you don't blow everything up some science going. Now I've met the, one of the computer players. He hasn't messed with me yet, but remember what I told you about those spheres of influence. So you notice Burius there and Baron. They're not in my sphere of influence, so the computer can come over there and start invading it. And he doesn't have to declare war. It's a pretty pivotal, pivotal time. If you can get a, some army out there, or a navy out there quick enough, you can sort of nip the computer's expansion in the bud. I'm just looking at He's got a little scout ship here. Now I'm going to see. I'm looking at his, my ships and his ships. Let's see. So you can see he's got kinetic. So he's got the bullets. Real basic stuff. But unfortunately, I also have the basic ships. So this will be close. There's sort of this card game-like thing they've worked in. So going with that rock, paper, scissors theme, you've got... Different kinds of abilities you can play. Most of them are free, but some of them take uh, dust to use. And you can learn more of those as you go. So it looks like that was a draw. But it'd be nice to knock out his uh, scout ship, because that would prevent him from exploring and maybe slow him down a little bit. So I just blockaded the system so he can't get out get out of there without fighting me. That's pretty neat. Of course, that can... <laughs> He also does that to me all the time. Every time I get my scouts over in his territory, he'll blockade me. I lose my scout. You can try to retreat sometimes, but it... You know, it's just kind of hit or miss whether you can actually get away. I like this uh, repair. One of the cards you can play actually repairs your, your ships. And if you use it right, you can actually come out of a battle in better shape than when you went in. Which is kind of fun. Actually, a little trick I learned is... If he, even if he's got some crummy little ship just passing through your system, it's often uh, well worth it to try to fight him and then hit that repair option. Because uh, otherwise it takes quite a while to repair your ships. And you won't repair at all if you're outside the system. So It pays to be aggressive. Also, of course, the more these heroes fight, the faster they level up. And eventually that can make a huge difference. You get a level 20 hero going and, and that's worth having a whole extra fleet. <laughs> At least that's what it feels like sometimes. All right, just steadily learning our research. Sometimes you get the free research just from exploring. And uh, I can actually learn two at a time. I don't know if that's a little glitch or what, but I always I try to queue up a couple. I guess if they finish one, they can start on the other one before the turn is over. I could be wrong about that. Maybe it's my imagination. But it seems like that's happened before. Go ahead and just queue up everything. <laughs> I get tired of checking this. Yeah, so much. 
a lot of these are only going to take one or two turns because there'll, there'll be a while when I'm gonna, basically going to get a new tech every couple of turns. It's pretty cool. All right, let's see if I can finish this guy off. I really haven't started making my navy yet. You're going to see. It gets to a point, at least every time I've played, where it's <laughs> like every planet you've got is just spitting out battleships, cruisers, and, and uh, what's the next one? Dreadnoughts. Just as quickly as you can make them. And this computer, it always amazes me in these games. I don't know if the AI cheats <laughs> or what, but... You know, you seem to be playing as, as you know as fast as you can, then the computer will just show up with, like, what? How the hell does he already have <laughs> Death Stars? You know, I'm still rocking the space shuttle program. There's a discovery of a wonder on that planet. It's pretty awesome if you could put a put a that system of Wyrix there. It's just, <laughs> it's just, oh, look at that. <laughs> it's full of planets and there's wonder and look at all those resources <laughs> yeah. hmm, I wonder which planet I'm going to settle next let's keep checking all this stuff you know I you, you can't stick those uh, planets on the AI and just let the AI, AI take care of it it does get a little tedious after a while when you've gone through all the you know a hundred times of the same planets I do play on the huge maps but I don't know it never... I kind of like the tedium. <laughs> kind of relaxing in a way just to go through all these planets and click, click, click. And I guess it's kind of like the real life world of administration. Yeah, just exploring out. Trying to get as much of this map explored as possible. There's my colony ship. Send that bad boy right over there to... Uh-oh, what a... <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Looks like there's an incident at Berius. That little orange cuck of maybe a little bastard. I don't know if he's just ex exploring or if he's going to try to invade it. It looks like it's just outside of my sphere of influence, so... It's like he's right inside my property there, Varen, scoping me out. Now I could, if I had a ship, I could attack him since he's on my property. Unfortunately... <laughs> I don't have the Navy. Getting a little bit nervous about that. Should probably start building up some destroyers. Another little wrinkle is that you can't have just an unlimited fleet size. And it's always a fleet on fleet combat. You can't just uh, attack him like one of his fleets with four years at once. So that the only the sucky thing about that is, if, again, if he's got that super advanced fleet, he can just destroy all of yours. And it'd be like, uh, you know, 50 dwarves going up against the same, you know, Hacksaw Jim Duggan and just, just going to knock them down one at a time. Whereas if you could just get them all to attack at once, but for whatever reason, you can't do that because space is finite, I guess. So anyway, it pays to have a... Uh, you might as well just have the smaller fleets and the more advanced ships and just keep making the little little runty ones. Now I've heard uh, some of the strategy guides I looked at, they some people really like that uh, just the uh, destroyer ones. I guess because they're the uh, the best ship you can make that only takes up one command point. So if you can really max, if you got really awesome weapons, I guess you could just stack those guys and come out ahead. Uh, but the tonnage is so limited on those, you really can't pack much firepower. I personally like the bigger ships. You won't be able to have as many of them, but you can put a lot more stuff in them. You know, another thing I just learned, I was looking up some information about these on their Endless Space Wiki. So I didn't know this until now, but apparently the each different kind of class, or each class ship has certain bonuses. Like the Corvettes, the, uh, the ones that scouts are made with, have... 25% discount on support modules. The destroyers have a 20% weapon module. The cruisers are 25% more support, so I guess like the uh, Corvettes. The support modules, by the way, that's where you get the armor. Not the uh, the shields, but armor, basically more health hit points. Uh, invasion modules, pretty cool. Takes a long time to take down a planet unless you got one of those. And then the power, which gives you bonuses to mix uh, max maximum and minimum damage. And then the battleships, you get 20% defense module. 
Now those, uh, the cruisers and the battleships both take two command points. So the, that could be an issue. I always end up with uh, one empty slot. It's kind of hard to, <laughs> you know, to get the math right, so I guess you might as well make keep a couple destroyers around just in case you have a little gap. The, looks like they're missing, oh, they're, no, the uh, Dreadnought is four slots. So, transports, corvettes, destroyers, cruisers, battleships, and dreadnoughts. And those, uh, that's as big as it gets in this, in this game, anyway. Oh, there, I'm back. <laughs> I noticed the, an it's and it's problem on this wiki, and I had to go and change it. That's, wikis are cool, aren't they? All right, so let's see, back to the game. It's been playing itself all this time. Yeah, still trying to... I still haven't got this spiral arm completely colonized yet. That's <laughs> that's an embarrassment. <laughs> but I've kind of gotten distracted. As you can see, he has attacked, invaded. Yeah, I probably don't want to be making more colony ships until I've taken care of this barbarian at the gates. Looks like he's going to take it, too. That little countdown timer is activated. Nine turns until he has conquered that. So I really need to step up my Navy production here. It's kind of hard to decide what's... <laughs> Everything is urgent right now. What can I do? Oh, God. You guys are probably going to see me fail. Yeah, I think I'm probably going to lose this. <laughs> Retreat! Oh god, I left my all oh, my heroes on that damn scout. Oh, this is bad. Oh, at least I got away though. Whew. Let me get that guy out of that fleet. Put him on a there we go. There's really you don't want your heroes on the scout ships. The, they're the ones that are most likely to be destroyed. Let's go ahead. Ah, scout versus scout. Maybe I can take him. I'll see if I can repair. Try that out. Uh, draw. Yeah, you quickly get tired of that. That manual option has the nice 3D graphics and you can follow around and see all the lovely animations and all that, but <laughs> I don't know about you. I quickly get tired of that and just I'm okay with a little a little bar. Supposedly, if you're in the manual combat, you can, instead of setting up all your cars beforehand, you can set them up as it goes. But I don't really know what the, I don't really think it's worth it. If you just really like to see animations, I guess, uh, you know, watch them on manual every time. I think they would have gave you a little extra incentive to do the manual combats, but I actually kind of like this way better because so many games like this, if you don't do the manual combat every time, you're basically screwed. The auto combat sucks. At least this one seems uh, relatively fair. You know, a couple sometimes you'll lose and you're not really sure what happened. I guess it's just luck of the draw. But I just always use the auto combat. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll show you the manual combat. You know, the stupid thing is, I bet you all of these guys, all their promotional shots probably showed you this manual combat. Give you totally the wrong impression of what you're going to be staring at 99% of the time is this damn overhead map. Let's go ahead and take a look at the pretty graphics. They worked hard on these. That's pretty cool. I don't know why I'm making fun of it. Battle at Beerus system. See, it's so much better, man. Look at that. I don't even have to use my imagination anymore. <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay. Arrival. Tensions building. You know, I can actually see this. It feels like a high stakes battle. You got these big fleets. And that is pretty cool. Kind of reminds me of Battlestar Galactica. The new one. <laughs> In case you were wondering. <laughs> These gonna be like the Cylons. So the different weapons hit at different phases of the battle too, so it's kind of cool. I mean, you could really get into this if you wanted to. And really know what the hell you're doing instead of just randomly clicking cards. 
I think I'm gonna get him. Look at that. Wait, is that my guy? <laughs> Serious guys? I lost track. Yeah, there's just you know, other than just picking what cards you want, there's not much you can really do here. It almost reminds me a little bit of a Magic the Gathering card. That's pretty nasty, that green puff. You know, and by the way, all the different factions do have their own aesthetics. That's pretty cool. I'm okay with these ships. Oh, no. All those little flaming sperms can't be good. Draw at Burius. Well, at least I got one of his ships. So you can only attack once per round. Sometimes he'll attack you, then you can counterattack, but... You can't attack twice. So you're just gonna have to wait. I can't blockade him though, so at least he can't get away. Let's see. I got another ship here, but I don't think it's going to uh, <laughs> be very good. <laughs> Alright, so let's just skip forward a little bit more and I'll show you some of the later game. So, unfortunately, as you can see here, he took Beerus. So I skip forward to the part where I get my revenge. Yes, I'm back! And I brought my axe! <laughs> oh, you're going down. Ah, well, he took one of my ships, but I got two of his, so... Oh, I level up. What doesn't kill me makes me stronger. It's just bugging me that he's got furious. God. Got to take that back. That is my only goal in life at the moment. Is retaking <laughs> Beerus. <laughs> I have a level of clarity now. I don't think I've ever had before. Oh, it's it's gonna be mine. Alright. Here we go. Let's try this again. He's got missiles, so let's go ahead and focus on the missile defense. Hopefully he won't anticipate that obvious ploy. And he did not, and he's dead. Level up again. This is a pretty cool. This is like a <laughs> defense against everything. In case he's got a mixed fleet. So it's only going to take one turn, and Beerus will be mine again. <laughs> okay, I'm going to skip way forward here now because I want to show you just what happens when somebody's foolish enough to try to take my Beerus. I'm just going to leave this part out where he actually retook Beerus. Now we'll move even further forward so you can see what really happens. What is destined to happen? Hmm, so what's going on here? Looks like I'm back in control of Beerus. And I'm just going to go ahead and see what happens when I click this little button called Invade. I have already declared war on this butthole. He is going down. See how he likes that. Give him a haircut. Yeah, it is kind of anticlimactic when you're <laughs> fighting this desperate battle, and you're like, "Oh, let me go make sure these uh, all these planets are building a planetary institute, and these guys have refrigerators." And that's the. I guess that's why in real life there's different people for this. Yeah. <laughs> You know, the guy deciding where to put the refrigerator is probably not the same guy. It's the Admiral of your fleet. Okay, let's keep on moving them down. Now, one kind of th uh, cool thing is you can put people in the hangar. And that way you can have them in reserve. And uh, the enemy can't attack them directly. If he tries to invade your planet, it'll actually uh, take longer because those guys are in the hangar. So I actually was using those hangers pretty pretty well, and unlike the fleets, you can have as many people as you want in the hangar, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Savor it. <laughs> yeah, he's desperate now. He's sending all this junk at me one at a time. He's completely lost control. <laughs> that's, good. that's pretty cool. I don't know if that's just bad programming on the AI, AI's part, or maybe it's actually good programming, because that's exactly what I would do. <laughs> He's like, oh... Oh no, send the scouts after him. I just want to attack. <laughs> I don't care if he kills me. <laughs> just can't, I uh, just can't sit there and let it happen. He's invading. 
Get that kid on the tricycle to go run into him. Pedal into those bastards. I got this other guy, the scout, just scoping out this blue guy's land. Remember what I told you before, you have to keep doing this. I mean, you you get off track, you start thinking about something else, and uh, you mess up doing that because if you not if you don't scout out all these other places you won't have people to trade with so got to make peace and explore their land uh, sometimes they'll try to make alliances with you too uh, that I, I just always say no to that though because uh, you always seem to be doing stupid things as part of the alliance attacking people you don't want to attack getting attacked by people that are your friends and then you get pulled into it they usually want to make a sucky trade, too. Like, yeah, I'll be your ally if you give me all of your strategic resources. Yeah, that'd be a smart thing to do. Gotta keep the people happy, too. Man, they start... They go on strike pretty quickly here. You gotta keep them preoccupied with shopping malls and supermarkets. Colonial rights. <laughs> like, would you rather have colonial rights or a supermarket? You know, it probably is true. People would probably rather go for the supermarket. I like the way in, uh, is it still one of those, which one of these games is it that you can make video games as one of your techs? <laughs> That'll keep them occupied. Alright, so just keep on conquering. I'll skip forward just a little bit more because uh, I know you want to see this orange guy go down. Yeah, you know, just like in Civ, there are different kinds of victory options. <laughs> I'm just blows my mind. Who wants to play a game like this and try to get an economic victory? Oh, look, I got the most hugs. Nah. All right, just basically just uh, abusing this guy really now. I mean, I almost feel sorry for him. <laughs> Not. <laughs> All right, here's his capital city. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, he never imagined it would come to this. <laughs> oh, I know. Just look at my hero, too, man. She looks like the kind of... Just the kind of badass. Just come right into the bar. And just kick your ass right in front of all your friends. <laughs> oh, yeah. Turkana. I wonder if I could rename this. Rename the city after I conquer it. Like, <laughs> you guys suck. <laughs> They're canna. Get over there. So I got these guys in the hangar. You know, he might take a couple of my ships here and there, but who cares, man? I just bring... I got the replacements on standby. Just dying to get off that bench and into it. Just need to try to keep them upgraded. Now I got the battleships there. You know, this isn't even the... I mean, <laughs> I probably may be like 20% into this game. I mean, I want to say I played this something like five hours. I had to get to this point. I know I played it for at least six hours total, so... Just this uh, one match. There's just plenty to go. I mean, I'm still just exploring the system, as you can see. Let's just put it this way, man. I've, got, I've been so addicted to, by this game. I haven't even loaded Wasteland 2. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so I had to get so uh, I had to get my feel for this before starting something new. You know, it was just it was bugging me because I played. This is probably my tenth or eleventh time starting over because uh, I played it before three or four hours and just got beaten. And it's not an easy game by any means. I mean, that's okay. I actually kind of like that. It's it's a level of difficulty you can appreciate. It, it rewards skill. I mean, you're not playing this and thinking, oh man, I just, the computer's cheating, or that's lame. I mean, you really feel like you had it coming. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just weren't trying hard enough, or you're always thinking, well, you know, I made those mistakes. I, I wouldn't do that again. And then you can reload, retry, and try out a different strategy. Eventually, you find something that works. Now I guess like any any game like this, you're going to get to a point where you're so far ahead that it's just kind of a matter of time. But there still seems there's just so much to explore and so many techs and everything on that tree that I think it'd still be fun. Now I haven't tried this on the multiplayer yet, and you know, I don't know what that's like. I assume there's probably uh, co-op modes, which would be pretty fun to, to try out. 
Uh, the AI is plenty tough enough for me. I don't feel like I need the... <laughs> like, oh, I can't wait to play this against somebody who would you know, be much better than this dumb AI. Yeah, you definitely get some a good challenge here. So all in all, uh, you know, what do I think about this game? Definitely worth 15 bucks. No question about that. 30? You know, I could see going to 30. I could see it. Uh, it's not perfect. There's a few little wrinkles here and there that could have been worked out. But uh, I'm just really impressed overall. I know this wasn't the hugest team in the world. The fact that they've gotten, you know, this, this level of polish on it. I mean, the gameplay is there. The addiction quality is there. I can't really think of any solid nitpicks I have. You know, I guess everything could always be a little better, right? But all in all, a really fun game. Highly recommended. Endless Space. And that's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Should be back next week with a special treat. We're going to have uh, David Shelley and Laura Bowen on from the TSI team. This is the uh, relaunch of the SSI Gold Box uh, franchise. Uh, they've got a game called uh, Seven Dragons Saga, which will be the spiritual successor to the Gold Box series. And they've actually told me all about their plans for their Kickstarter project and answered all sorts of questions about the game. So it's really uh, newsworthy stuff. Really happy that uh, they shared all that just for Match yet. So that'll be on the air next time. Uh, as always, thank you very, very much, guys, if you have supported this show. It uh, really means a lot to me. As you know, I'm not, there's no ads on these uh, videos. There's no corporate sponsors or anything. It's just guys just like you who have chipped in dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, whatever uh, you feel comfortable with and whatever the videos are worth to you personally. Now, if you would like to support the show, just go to the patrons link in the show notes. It only takes about five seconds to set this up. And it makes a big difference. And it'll also get you access to a bunch of uh, special videos and, and Google Air Hangouts, uh, things that are only available to patrons. It doesn't matter what level, a dollar, hey, you're in there. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about those uh, past episodes. We just had Mark Gregory on uh, from Solarix, really cool uh, Deus Ex, uh, uh, what's the System Shock 2 style uh, game. And then we had uh, Michael Hartman on the Hangout before that. He's the He did the Kickstarter for Stash, uh, which was, as you know, successfully funded. So you're missing out if you're not chipping in. Uh, so please go set that up. Love to see you in those Hangouts and on the uh, uh, Rat Chat. All right, so let's see. News from the Matt Cave. Oh, lots of news here on the old card today. Uh, biggest news, obviously, is the Wasteland 2 has hit. Uh, this is out, came out a few days ago. And I just saw a, a Facebook status update from Brian Fargo. Apparently they have already uh, surpassed a million dollars. So this is definitely looking like a, a big hit uh, for their company. Really happy to hear this. And I know it's going to open up lots of doors and confirm a lot of, of hopes uh, that this sort of, this is the way of the future. You know, we're going to uh, not have to depend on these big publishers anymore. We can fund the games we want to see through Kickstarter. So really exciting stuff. Really happy for Brian. Congratulations to them. Uh, also, there's an Age of Wonders 3 expansion. Uh, you might remember uh, my covering that game not too long ago. I guess it's probably been years now. <laughs> Seems like just yesterday we did that. Uh, the expansion, I haven't heard anything about it yet, but it looks pretty good. Uh, so if you're a fan of that game, you probably want to check that out. Uh, also, there is a Kickstarter out that I'm supporting. It's a Paradigm Surreal Adventure. It's kind of an old uh, point-and-click style game, but it's got a really uh, interesting twist to it. I'll let you uh, look at the Kickstarter pitch video. I think you you know, even if you don't want to support this, I think you should go look at this Kickstarter video. It's, it's just really fun. All right, so what about that ale of the week? Uh, so this week I've got a Sweet Child of Vine India Pale Ale. This is Ordinary, gra ordinary Guys Brewing Extraordinary Beer. Well, uh, they're Fulton <laughs> out of uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, just up the road here. Uh, balanced, complex, approachable. There's even a Fulton Manifesto. Let's see, is there anything unusual? <laughs> Excellence is no excuse for pretense. <laughs> uh, everything worth doing is worth doing with soul. Blah, blah, blah. I wonder who came up with that copy. 10% of profits invested in the Fulton Fund? <laughs> Okay, I don't know what the Fulton Fund is. Maybe it's some kind of charity. You should probably go look that up. But anyway, it's kind of nice to think it's going to do uh, some kind of 
some kind of goal, right? Okay, alcohol, 6.4% by volume, 69 I IBU. So a little on the, a little stronger than uh, most beer, but not uh, not crazy. Anyway, let's get this open and see what it's all about. All right, so I got some of this sweet child of vine here in this uh, rather excellent drinking horn. It smells a little bit like paint. <laughs> Definitely getting some kind of a not necessarily unpleasant. Maybe it's just the type of hops they used. Uh, doesn't smell uh, dangerous or anything, but it's kind of an unusual aroma to it. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> before I get high on the fumes, maybe I should test it. Mm. Uh, nice and thick. A lot of uh, flavor there. Kind of a fruity uh, flavor to it. A little bit of a chocolatey-like taste. Yeah, pretty strong chocolatey coffee taste. Uh, not unusual for an IPA. Not really bitter at all. It's kind of a, it's kind of an unusual flavor to this. Um, can't quite place <laughs> what that is, but it's not bad. Actually, pretty good. It's it's definitely a it's definitely tasty. Let's try it one more time. Yeah, you know, really solid choice here. It's a flavorful. Um, doesn't uh nothing really is blowing me away in terms of a what is that? <laughs> I'm gonna have to try this one more time. There is some flavor to this. This cannot quite place. What is that? I just can't tell you what that is. I'm kind of words uh, uh defying me right now, but it's uh pretty good. Let me look at this. Maybe they. Sweet Child of Vine. Yeah. Not seeing any information on here about the hops in this, but there's definitely it's, it's definitely a unique. At least I haven't tasted anything quite like that. Uh, you know what can I say? It tastes pretty good. I'm gonna try it one more time and try to see if I can identify that flavor. Just can't do it. A little bit of a wine-like taste, maybe. Maybe I'm just imagining that because of the word vine on the bottle. But anyway, it's a very solid choice. I like the flavor. It's very complex. I'm going to go full of five out of five drinking horns on this. Kind of hard to describe, <laughs> as you just saw. Uh, so uh, you can seek this out if you want to try something. Literally, uh, unlike anything I've tried. Uh, really tasty, too. All right, let's wrap this up with a quotation. And I was looking for quotations about space exploration you know, given the, the theme of the game. And I found one from Nils deGrasse Tyson, uh, one of my favorites. Uh, you actually should watch the show. He's got a remake of Cosmos, uh, the old show with Carl Sagan. It's up on Netflix right now. It's really good. Highly uh, recommend that. But anyway, here's the quotation. Space exploration is a force of nature that no other force in society can rival. See you guys next week. I'm not in the mood. Not in the mood. Mood's a thing for cattle and love play, not fighting. I'm sorry, Gurney. Not sorry enough. <laughs>